Next thing on this month's GPS training is a chat with Tom from Garmin. Welcome, Tom, to this month's GPS training podcast. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Are you keeping fit and well? I am, yes. Very well. Good. Are you getting out doing much walking these days? Cycling or mountain biking at the moment? It's mountain a biking. Of the month. Very good. Very good. So Tom's joining us uh, to discuss the launch of the new GPS map ranges. So there's actually two, which is a new 65 and a 65S, and then there's a new GPS map 66R that's just been launched by Garmin. Very impressive, Tom. Actually, I'm quite impressed by the uh, the increase in specs from both these GPS units. Yeah, yeah, some uh, slight increases on both ranges, really, and uh, refreshes to some iconic models. Yeah, so let's let's start with the the 65 65s range. So this is really a follow on from the 64s. The 64s um, was Garmin's button GPS unit, the leader for many years, really. 62 64s, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So um, it's still using that original shape um, rather than the upgraded 66. Shape. Yeah. So it's quite interesting, really, because we always thought the 66 was an upgrade from the 64s, and then you brought out the 64. SX, which is quite a, kind of a, an interesting market, well, a change in the market, wasn't it really? Yeah, um, it kind of um, slots into a, a certain price point area um, and, and the 62 series onwards has been around for such a long time and um, it's kind of becoming an iconic piece of the, uh, the range really. Yeah, so 64 SX um, has now been replaced Placed, or I assume it's going to be replaced with the 65 and the 65S. So really, we'll talk really about the 65S. 65 is the um, model without the electronic compass and the barometric ultimate, I'm presuming, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then the 65S is the uh, the, the, well, the model. So it looks exactly the same uh, casing as the 64, or maybe a little bit like the 62. People have seen those units in the past. But there's a number of key features that have been added to it. And I think the key thing really is this multiband GPS. So it's the first GPS unit um, alongside this new 66S, which we're going to discuss in a minute, with this multiband GPS, Tom. So really, multiband is normally with a modern GPS unit, uh, we've got the usually the GPS and the um, GLONASS and the Galileo satellite. But this also adds another couple of satellite types. And also the technology kind of changes a fair bit, really, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This is kind of the next leap when it comes to GPS technology, really, major leap anyway. It's um, definitely um, opening up a new world for handhelds, etc. So um, there's two new satellite constellations that we're um, linking into, which is QZSS, which is a Japanese constellation of satellites, and the IRNSS, which is the Indian satellite constellation. Do you, are they fairly new ones? Because Galileo's fairly new are they quite new the japanese and the indian one or we have they've been around the for indian years one is relatively uh new but i think the japanese one's been around for a little while mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's quite a thing really one two three four five six and satellite types we draw from you know it was only really we go back to the, the 62 where we just had one gps system in place now we're utilizing five aren't we which is phenomenal yeah, absolutely. there's a lot more satellites to look for now and covering lots of different regions it's making it a you know true global product as well mm -hmm. So there's this multiband as well. So we're using five uh, different satellite types and now we've got multiband. What really is multiband? I'm, I'm not aware of what this is. So multiband allows the unit to receive more than one signal from the same satellite. Um, so when um, traditionally we've only been receiving signals on what we call the L1 band. Um, and then the unit from receiving four of those signals from four satellites or three um, if, you, uh, if you're really struggling, can calculate its location. Now it can receive two signals from the same satellite and that allows it to remove some of the errors that come from, from kind of satellite signal usage, the location calculation. So I wasn't aware, I just thought a satellite just sent off a signal, but it doesn't, there's a number of bands that different people have access to. Is that the way it works, is it? Yeah, so the L1 is the, was traditionally the uh, public access band. Mm -hmm. um, there's L2, which is military, and then L5, which was mainly used for um, aeronautical navigation, um, but that's now been opened up to public use. Okay, so what? How 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 more accurate are we going to get with this? Is it is it going to be a quicker fix? Is it just more accurate down to you no know, meters or less than a meter? What's what we're going to get from this? So extra um, it's really hard because it's in under different circumstances where the unit will get become more accurate. So um, yes, you should get a quicker fix with it. Um, mm -hmm. 
definitely will incre in, increase, uh, decrease sorry, the fixed speed. Um, but also it's removing some of the errors that you might not know are there that are throwing signals off. Um, so a really common one is multipath error. So that's where the signal can be bouncing off um, buildings, uh, it can get scattered by trees, tall ravines, uh, when you're at the side of a, a really steep mountain, for example, um, you can get the signal bouncing off the side before it hits your device. And then it sh the unit then struggles to calculate, but with two sets of frequencies to go at, it can remove that, that error by knowing that one of the frequencies is bouncing off the side where one isn't. That's brilliant. I'm quite excited about this to kind of see how this works. Because again, it's not something I was even aware of where these errors, but actually these errors can be rectified by, well, and, and the thing, the nice thing, and I'm looking at it, these units are no more expensive really than, than what no, is a big, big step in the technology side, but the units are kind of very similar price than what they were before. Absolutely. This is kind of the next step forward from mm -hmm. technology for handhelds. And the yeah. other thing, go on, go on, sorry, go on. Uh, the other way it can um, correct the error is um, through atmospheric problems. So we do get atmospheric problems with GPS signal, um, different densities of atmosphere at different times of the day, different parts of the year affect the signal differently. Um, so traditionally, we've had two ground monitoring stations that um, collect the GPS signal and transmit and calculation. So an offset that units can, um, can use, but that's not operating all the time, or you might not be able to get that signal. This now removes that ionospheric error that you can get. Fantastic. Well. Good stuff. I'm really looking forward to getting out and using these and seeing exactly how they work. Well, the key thing with the 65, 65S is now, uh, as most units are now from Garmin, coming preloaded with the topo mapping, isn't it? I think this is, is this going to be the norm really going forward, is it? Yeah, absolutely. We were putting the reachable topo mapping on, on most of the units going forward now. Gives yeah. a really good base layer and a, a decent map set, really. Yeah, and the nice thing about the topo active mapping, people don't know, it's 44 European countries, including uh, in the UK, and this is updatable as well. So the big updates uh, keep taking place. So yeah. again, if we do go overseas, and and it, 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 we've got maps there. If we don't have a GB map card, nor a server map card, no, we buy a unit without one. We've actually got uh, maps there, and they keep saying this, it's updatable as well. So this is going to get better and better. And I think this is the way Garmin are kind of going, isn't it? They really like this topo active mapping and it's getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of improvements going on in that area. Well, the key thing with the 65, 65S is we now incorporate it with this Garmin Explore app. So um, up to now, we've only really got the new Montana 700, 66i, 66S are compatible with this Explore app. Um, yeah, a little bit, Tom, what is the Explore app for people who don't know what that is? So Explore app kind of works hand in hand with Topo Active, really. The, the two of them work together. So Garmin Explore is an... Uh, a phone or tablet based app. And on there, you can download the, ex the Topo app to your device and plan on your phone or um, tablet and then Bluetooth the routes to and from the device straight away. And um, so it kind of gives you portable route planning, but it does work hand in hand with Topo Active or Topo Mapping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's it kind of alleviates the need for a, a, a Mac or a PC out of the equation. I think it's more the way that you know, Garmin going to go forward in the future, isn't it, I think? Yeah, give more flexibility. You can plan on the fly. Well, the nice thing as well is you can actually just download GPX files just directly onto your mobile phone and just wirelessly transfer those onto unit through that Explore app, which again is, is um, yeah, a lot more people are wanting, that, especially if they're away on holiday, they don't want to take their, their laptop with them or whatever, do they? Yeah, yeah, you get a quick change of plan. You can um, quickly put a new GPX file on your device. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, because now it's tethered with your mobile phone, we've got these smart notifications. Okay, something we've seen now on on units. I think Oregon seven hundred. I, I think if we sixty four S. I think had it as well. no swear. There's smart notifications, which is you know, any apps and things that are on there. Your notifications appear on the screen. Um, no, it's, it's yes, yeah, tethered to your mobile phone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So really nice. I say that's kind of a summary of the 65, 65S. Really nice additions. Um, the key thing is, as Thomas saying, is that multiband GPS, um, which, which like I say, you're going to see the improved accuracy. And it comes in fairly decent price. So again, I'm just rummaging through the paperwork here. You know, um, 65 is coming in, you know, recommended retail price 299 or 349 for the 65S. Again, it will be additions if you've got ordnance survey mapping on there. And again, as you rightly say, it's a, it's a proven um, shell. You know, a lot of people like that design and continue uh, to buy it. And I think it's a really two nice additions to the, uh, the uh, GPS range from Garmin. 66SR, 
so this is the other unit that's just been launched, uh, GPS Map 66 SR. Am I kind of right, really, to say, is this going to be a replacement for the ST, is, or is this ST going to continue along? So yeah. ST, people know, is really S, uh, GPS Map 66S with the topo active mapping built in. Um, is this going to replace this, Tom, is it? Yeah, this uh, will end up being a replacement for the 66 ST, um, yeah. because it still retains that topo active mapping we've been talking about so let's think of what units we've got in this range really we've got the 66 s currently got a 66 st which i think this sr is is replacing and then we've got the 66 i which is the one that has the two-way satellite communication the in reach technology built into it so the case is exactly the same as what we see on the 66 s um and again it's got this multi-band um multi-band technology built into it doesn't it yeah, absolutely same multiband technology built into the uh, device just brings this technology to the latest mm -hmm. kind of exhibition range handhelds. Well, the key difference really is is the battery life. Um, so again, we're, we're following on really from what we've seen with the um, 66i, we've now got a built-in battery uh, built into this unit, which is, um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see this going more and more that way rather than running off AA batteries. Is, is there a reason for that? Is it battery technology getting better? Is it, what, I don't know, is that the way that potentially Garmin are going? Yeah, I mean, battery technology is improving and it improves kind of year on year. And we're kind of at that tipping point now where a rechargeable lithium ion will give you more than two sets of AA batteries. You know, the, the new 66 R is quoting um, up to 36 hours of battery life from its internal battery. That's more than enough for most people over a a weekend um, to get going. I'm grinning here. I always halve that. Everything that Garmin said, I always halve. But even if you halve it, which is going to, because you are messing around with it. No, you're still coming down to you know, 18 hours of battery life. So it's, it's funny. I never really looked at these things. I've been using the 66i for, um, um, well, for, I would say, eight, nine, 10 months now. Actually longer, it would be maybe 12 months. And actually this has got the same battery built into it. And I've been saying to people, actually, you know what? I'm getting... Like if I'm out for a big day's walking, you know, no, no, 18, 20 mile walks, you know, eight to 10 hours out there. So it's just using half my battery life. Well, that's, that's kind of right. I am getting no two days battery life out of it. Um, so again, if it's got the same battery technology, it's not got the in reach technology built in, it should be a little bit better. You are going to get you no know, two, three plus days battery life out, which is phenomenal, really, isn't it? And then some of the technology that's come from our watch is kind of different battery modes is slowly starting to trickle down. So you've now got expedition mode in here. Mm -hmm. um, again, the quoted um, battery hours is 450 hours in, in expedition mode, um, which is quite a long time to keep your device running. Uh, that must really just drop your, you know, it's your track recording and things like that would be like, you no, know, instead of every few seconds, it's going to be you no know, minutes, if not tens of minutes. Into yeah, I think so. Yeah, that. I think generally it, what it does is it, it shuts the device down and it wakes up every half mm -hmm. an hour or hour to get a signal fixed and then shuts itself down again. The nice thing with that is, you no, know, if you are out in the field, you no, know, you're using your GPS to its full potential. You no, know, if something does go wrong or you are you are going to be out for a longer period, you can just switch expedition mode on, and then it kind of goes into that stage of just like you know, just keeping the battery kind of going and keeping you going, doesn't it? Really? So yeah, yeah, it gives you a backup device, doesn't it? But a mm -hmm. powered, ready to go backup device. So it's still got all the same things. So we've still got that large screen. It's got that three-inch readable screen. We've still got all your ABC sensors, they call it, with altimeter, elevation data, barometric, uh, three-axis compass. We can still download bird's eye satellite imagery onto it. We've got the active weather. Um, it's got the LED flashlights on the back, live geocaching. It's always worked next to the Explore app. Um, this model has, uh, or the previous model, the 66S, has always worked with it. And we've got this IPX7 rating as well, which is this um, updated rating. So really... The updates are this new multiband GPS and this built-in battery, which I know I've been speaking to a number of customers and, and uh, 66i users and are really liking this built-in battery. So again, it'd be interesting to see how that's taken on board. It's quite interesting when we do our course, you've talked a lot about battery life. And actually, it's funny, over the last no, year, 18 months, we've kind of gone from, let's look at the options of AA batteries, then, or let's look at the options of battery backs and other battery backups, because actually that's more the way that you know, we're, we're tending to go, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Good. Anything else, Tom, you want to add on this? Is anything, any inside goss that you want to tell us at Garmin that we uh, that you can share to our, our customers? No, I think that's it. Brilliant. So I'm just going to look at the recommended retail price, 449 for the 66 SR. And again, that's with, with topo active mapping. Again, it must be another £100 with a 150000 and a, a, a little bit more than that, 125000 So again, 
it's kind of coming in just that little bit well it's it's comparable price than where the 66 st was before so tom yeah. thank you very much for joining me on this month's gps training podcast and uh, yeah it's great to have you back on great stuff great to speak to you cheers thank you cheers